Hello my artist, Miss Q here. Happy New Year, welcome to 2021. Today we are going to create space in a landscape. So a landscape is a painting, a drawing, an artwork showing the countryside, the land, out in nature. All right, now I want you to use your imagination when you're making yours. We don't have to just have nature. Maybe there's a building there, okay? Be kind of creative here. So I wanna show you what we wanna make in our landscapes. And that's three areas in our landscape to create the sense of depth. Now the sense of depth means some things look far away and some things look really close or closer to you, okay? So your foreground is always the lowest part of your picture. So our picture is going to be broken down into three sections. We have our foreground, middle ground, and our background. So your background, you've probably heard of, it's far in the back, it's the highest section, all right, in your landscape. And it's typically lighter in color because as things get further away, you can't see as much detail, they're gonna look a little lighter. Our middle ground is right in the middle of the page. Okay, and this is always horizontally, all right? Not vertically, we don't have background, middle ground, foreground. We have our background at the top, middle ground in that middle, and then that foreground is what's closest to you in the picture, okay, when you're looking at it. So your foreground, you can remember that word by thinking of front or first. That's your foreground. And that middle ground is right in the middle. All right, these trees are in your foreground. Behind them, there's these are smaller little pine trees. They're in the mid, or he or it is in the middle ground. And then this one's in the background way far away. Okay, so there's some tricks to creating that space by giving yourself a foreground, middle ground, background. Things look further away. But something else we can do is make things smaller as they go towards the background. So these trees are larger this tree is the smallest it's far away by this castle far away okay so before we start on our drawing you will need paper I'm going to use colors if you have colors use them something to draw with all right you can pause the video Oops. to get your supplies together and we will take a moment to look at some few works of art we have seen before, and we're gonna look at them again. So The Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. We have our foreground is this tree, this big shape. That's the closest thing to us. It's on the bottom of our picture. This is our foreground. Our middle ground, we have these bushes. These buildings here, they're in the middle. And then our background is this big sky and some really distant mountains. Okay. So if you wanna create a landscape like this, maybe you wanna be inspired by the starry night and create those swirls. All right, our foreground, middle ground, background. Okay, we can look at another landscape here. Okay. We have our foreground, the things closest to us, middle ground, background. This mountain is far away, it's in the distance. We can see some faint mountains here. We have trees in the middle ground. They don't have as much detail as these trees in the foreground. These are closer to us, so we can see more details. Right, as things get further away, move up that picture, 
there's less and less detail and they're getting lighter. That's to show that space. Oops. Here's one more we have seen before. And this is, whoops, Hakusai, I almost said Kusama, she made our pumpkins. They're both from Japan. But Hakusai made this print. If you remember our great wave. All right, now there are no trees here, but we still have a foreground, middle ground, and background. This boat is much larger than this boat. It's also further down in the picture, the bottom. So we know this is closest to us. We have the smaller sized boat. So we know they're not right next to each other. And this is just a shorter boat. He, this one is further away. Okay, and we know that because it's higher up. It's in our middle ground. And then way far away in the background by the sky, we have this little mountain. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and create our own. You can follow along with me or you can use your imagination and go wild. Something whoop, easy to start with is sectioning off your paper if you're not sure starting with that foreground first create a line for your middle ground and then another line for your background okay and that's what i'm going to do let me get my marker ready and we can make anything i might add some water to mine before you get started sometimes it helps to look at your paper and imagine first. Maybe you want a landscape that has a castle. Maybe there's a dragon. All right, I'm going to start with my paper horizontally. Now, if you want to create a vertical picture, that's okay. Typically, landscapes are horizontal. They're wider, okay, to show the whole nature landscape, the whole area, okay? But there are some that are this way too. I'll show you an example. This is a vertical landscape. Okay, there's some vertical landscapes. Typically, you'll see horizontal landscapes. Okay. We can put anything. We're just going to create a foreground, middle ground, background. Give ourselves a sense of space, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start my picture and I'm going to give myself some guidelines here. So I'm going to go ahead and put, this is my foreground, I'm going to give myself a middle ground and a background. So I've lightly drawn, oops, can you guys see that? Two lines in the middle of my page. So this gives me some guidelines so I can see the sections and I know I need to add something larger here, the bottom, something a little smaller, high up, and then something in my background, okay? So I might put in my foreground, let's kind of mix some things up. I'm going to put down here, let's create some jagged rocks, maybe some bushes. Okay, you're going to see in your canvas, I've attached a video of the illustrator, Maurice Sendak. He did a lot of the illustrations from uh, books like Where the Wild Things Are. You can take a look at that video if you're not sure to get inspired by some of his landscapes. They're in the behind those monsters. Okay, I might put a little bush here. A little bush. I'm going to use, this is a organic shape. So I'm not going to worry about the details yet, really. Let's just give him some curving lines. This little bush guy. 
That looks like a piece of broccoli, doesn't it? <laughs> this kind of tree here. Making this bigger, smaller. Right now it could be a little bush. It could be a big tree. We have to add other things so we know the size of this, right? We don't know how big this is yet. Let's, let's decide. You know what? I might make this a bigger tree. Okay, so now I have something in my foreground. And I'm going to add some water to close this thing. I'm just going to move up my sections. Okay, now I'm going to the middle ground. The middle ground. Let's come over here and maybe add a swooping valley. Add all, maybe if there's a rock here, I put some buildings. Like a little village here. Let me put, this is the water. Let's put a lighthouse. Have you ever seen a lighthouse before? See, I'm gonna put all kinds of things here. Let's add these little details. And then in the background, what should we put? Ooh, if there's water, let's add maybe some mountains. You know what this kind of looks like, instead of added mountains here too, we can turn this into the Dallas, the downtown Dallas, that dome. Have you guys ever seen that downtown? <laughs> hmm. Maybe there are mountains far away, far, far away. Let's add some more trees here. So I have a tree down here in my foreground. I'm going to make a smaller tree up here. Maybe there's lots of trees. Whoops. And what I'm really adding are some kind of cloud shapes. Maybe some behind. Okay each section has layers adding these these details in okay if I have some water here you know what let's put a bigger house right there too put a, oh whoa let's add some bigger houses here maybe there's a house right by the water now I almost made a mistake right here. Remember, we have to make mistakes when we make art, but I want to show you something. Where I got really close to this little tree that's further away, and that's okay as long as you put whatever is closer to you in front. So I would want to make sure not let this tree come over the top of this roof. I want to make sure this roof is closer to us, okay? So if you go over it a little bit, Let's say my tree's kind of showing. I'm gonna color that in so I'm not gonna worry about it too much, okay? All right, so let's start adding some color. I can keep adding details, keep going. It's up to you. I'm gonna start with my background first and I'm gonna create this sky. And I'm gonna have kind of a, oops, let's have a, a sunrise kind of Kind of shape here. And I'm using crayons. So let's put, put maybe a rainbow. 
My sun is coming up. It's going to be behind these mountains in the background. So it's really far away. We're trying to create that depth, which is the sense that some things are closer, some things are further away. And then look up, uh oh, crayons are going everywhere. Let's go ahead and add some orange. And remember if your picture doesn't look like mine, that's okay, so don't worry. A beautiful sun sunset or rise. Maybe we'll put a little red. some fun. Ooh, and let's add, you know what, I just had a good idea. Let's add a really close up bush or tree. Look at that depth that gives that. This is a lot closer. We'll put one here too. These little bushes. And add some detail to some detail. And these lines are to show the texture of the grass here. So maybe you can see that texture here because you're closer, and maybe you wouldn't have it over here. Okay. Oh, adding some little door knobs, or little doors now. Right, maybe there's a road. A little, little roads. They're going all different ways. And I could, I'm going to start coloring. I could go on forever drawing, adding those details in. Maybe there are some birds flying in the sky. That's up to you. Maybe you don't want as much detail. You want your picture to have a little less. We don't always have to put a lot in order to show depth. Okay, we can add lots of detail. It's really up to you. So I'm working my way down. It's okay if you start from the the uh, the bottom in your foreground and then work your way up. Okay, and I always do this upside down so you guys can see in the camera a little better. I'm gonna draw a zigzag. On oh, my mountains, they're far away. They're not gonna have as much detail. So I'm not going to worry about really filling them in, okay? And I'm going to take my red, I'm going to make this a nice little red house here. A little blue house. Hmm, you know what, I might come in and give them some windows. So whoever lives there, they can see outside. Some round windows. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Little purple house.
maybe add a little hope is my marker might be running out and then add in a little these are details remember you don't have to put add a little horse here in the field oh I love it <laughs> Can add lots and lots of detail. Just a little bit of detail. So I'm coming in with my browns for the branches and the trunk of my trees. And I'm gonna go ahead while I'm holding my brown and I'm gonna come in and color every trunk. Okay. While I have it. Let's see any more. And now I want to come in with my green. And what I'm doing to give a texture of leaves, I'm taking my crayon and I'm going to hold it down and make kind of swirling, curling lines. I'm going to put that all over. And a way to make your closest tree that's in the foreground down here, a way to make that look a little more detailed is by putting different colors into this tree. So I'm going to put yellow and blue since my yellow and blue create green. Boop, boop, boop. And we're just going to keep adding them in. And that kind of makes these closer trees. I'm going to do the same thing here to the tops. It makes these closer trees look even closer because you can see they have more detail. Remember we, we lose that as we move up our picture plane and we can't really see all that detail. When you look outside and you look far away at something you can't really see all the detail. That's something that's really close, right? Coming and now I'm just adding my color. You can do this any way you want. Oh, can you see my hands in the way, isn't it? Let's add. I don't know what color to make my horse. Could have a purple horse. Could be any color I'd like. Okay, so I made this middle ground a lighter shade or value of green than I want to do here. I'm going to really fill this in and press down hard so it looks like it's closer. Okay. Alright, and that's so it stands out against the light green and you know that that's further away. Oops, sorry, let me move my hand. I know I started this out kind of making it rocks, but sometimes when we get inspired, go with it. That's what artists do. Get inspired. And a little blue over here. darker so it really pops out if I want. And I might make, you know, that tower I think is a gray. I'm going to go ahead and make this blue building. Make it really light. And then I want to come in and darken up this blue. Maybe you want to look outside your window and try to create the foreground, the middle ground, and the background that you see. Put a castle or spaceship. And make this little this little horse brown. It might be brown. A beautiful auburn pony there. Maybe this is a little dirt road. My 
artist, let's take a look. Oh, it's gorgeous, it's gorgeous. We've created our foreground, our middle ground, and our background. Okay, you can put anything you want in your picture. Get inspired, but remember that a good way to kind of help yourself though is to create those guidelines first. Remember we just have three sections in your landscape to create depth, and that's that foreground, middle ground, and then your background, it's the furthest away. So things are smaller and they're higher up on your picture, okay? All right, my artists, I hope you have fun. I will see you soon, okay? Bye, happy new year.